Thank you. Great. Wow, uh, it's a privilege to be here, and uh, we in Finland are especially proud of our current state of public-private partnership, and um, I'm here to give you an example of that uh, through the exercise that we held during the last year. But firstly, how do I change the screen? Great. Uh, firstly, I'll have to give you some background information. So who are we? Um, as mentioned, my name is Antti Quist and I'm the chief secretary of DigiPool. Uh, DigiPool is essentially a network of companies which is dedicated to further preparedness and continuation planning in companies in Finland. Uh, we are part of the NESA, National Emergency Supply Agencies Network of Companies, uh, and NESA again is a uh, uh, government officials working under the uh, Economic Affairs Ministry in Finland. And Julia. Right, and good, thank you, Antti. So good day from my behalf as well. My name is Julia Vainio, and I work at the Finnish Transport and Communications Agency, and more specifically at the National Cyber Security Center. Uh, my uh, work there includes cyber exercises coordinating, so we support and coordinate different types of cyber exercises on a national level and also on an international level. So today I will be talking about the NCSC's contribution to the Theater 20 public-private partnership um, exercise and how, what were the key lessons learned from our side in this exercise. So nice to be here. Antti, I'll hand it over to you. Well, thank you. And what I forgot to mention is that I'm essentially was I was also a project manager for this exercise. So therefore, I'm uh, more telling you about the arrangements how we did it. Uh, how, well, how how did the theater exercise improve the public-private partnership here in Finland? Uh, we'll firstly give you some background information to kind of uh, highlight uh, on what were the participants, for example, in the exercise, and that way we can more clearly uh, point out the facts how how we did it. Uh, well, the theater exercises have a long background for over 22 years already and, and still counting. And essentially it's a continuation that builds on top of the previous exercise every time over. Uh, basically the uh, exercise is a scenario-based ta table dot exercise, but it always has included a real life role action, uh, role, <laughs> real life role action playing game <clears throat> in the end of the exercise. And essentially, that uh, that is a valuable example uh, of the successful part fiber partnership through the participants that are in, involved in the exercise: government officials, companies, uh, all mixed together, working working for uh, a cyber crisis uh, to, in order to solve it and in order to recover from it. Uh, essentially, the exercise is a platform for developing and testing uh, uh, existing methods and, and uh, existing uh, plans on how to recover from, from such an incident. And uh, what makes the exercise quite effective is the fact that it's been organized together with the Finnish broadcasting company, which is creating real life news feeds into the exercise, of, but based on the imaginary news content that we have developed. Overall, the high-level goals for this exercise is to create prerequisites for the cooperation that exists in these uh, vast networks of companies and government officials, and especially, of course, on cyber incidents, as mentioned. And we are aiming to develop the situational awareness in companies, but to uh, build them capabilities and provide them information to enable better decision making in, in vast cyber incidents. And uh, one essential part is also to uh, induct them into the existing cooperation forums and structures which are in Finland nowadays and can support them to survive the uh, cyber crisis. And of course, we are trying to produce results that we can measure or follow up afterwards and see that they are developing and, and that the cooperation is being developed further. 
And uh, one essential point is that the, the cyber development programs in Finland gain their topics from these kinds of exercises. So whatever we find in the exercise will be uh, developed further in, the, in those programs. And for example, the NIST directive has been implemented in Finland so that uh, we can exercise it, for example, in the Tieto 20 exercise that we had last year. So it's, it's something uh, we believe that is unique in the European level. And what does an organization gain by participating in the exercise? But first of all, uh, everything we do in the exercise aims to the fact that we hope that the participants can update their plans uh, or even their agreements based on the exercise or whatever findings they have there. Uh, we hope that they will start organizing their own cyber exercises in their own organization. And we hope that we can provide them information that uh, makes the, gives them rationale to invest in the, in the uh, in the cyber cyber security, well, usually the cyber security is something that has been seen as a cost, and uh, the direct uh, well, kind of direct feedback from the investments is not that obvious. So uh, for hopefully we can keep rationale on how to recover from the incidents by saving, and that usually means saving money in the process as well. <clears throat> And yes, the TIA 20 exercise was more than just an exercise. It's more about the cooperation of the networks and companies. Uh, the TIA 2 exercises have been arranged every other year, and uh, usually the focus changes from year to year in these exercises. And this time around, we focused on the food production, resale and delivery, uh, and logistics related to those fields of industry. Uh, we had oil essentially there because it's needed in the logistics and water because that is needed in the food production. And then we had the sector specific officials involved uh, from those fields of industry, such as the NIS reporting related officials. We also had the partner companies or the service providing companies that provide services to the uh, first dimension sectors, such as the telecom ICT and, and security, physical security protection providing companies and the network and cooperation of all of these uh, in one cyber crisis. And of course, then we had officials such as Yulia involved. In <laughs> right, this. exactly. So what we wanted to do is to create kind of a mini simulation of a society. And by doing that effectively, we also had to have the information security officials incorporated in the exercise. So that's the reason why we had our center, uh, NCSC, as well as uh, members from the police force and other um, defense forces and such um, come together to organize this exercise. So they were both exercising there, helping the other participants, and also we were part of the uh, planning process. So uh, definitely a, a very comprehensive uh, participation. Yeah, then of course we had the bad guys there, the red team uh, that was taking the game further uh, and, and uh, kind of directing the game through the pre-scheduled uh, scenarios uh, from from the background work that we have done and then we had the white team which simulated the uh, otherwise missing society of the exercise uh, the miniature society that we had here uh, included almost all the uh, needed parts there but uh, in case something was missing such as the president of finland it was simulated by the white team which was really interesting to see happen about the profiles that participated uh, from those companies. We had lots and lots of different organizations participating in the, in the exercise for, from uh, 10 fields of industry. And what's, what was kind of uh, the most important topic here is that it's, it really wasn't a, a huge investment for the participants to join the exercise. Uh, we calculated that it was of, of roughly around 10,000 working hours that was spent in participating in the exercise. And that really is an investment from the participants. And uh, uh, we hope that they feel that they gain something really uh, by participating uh, since they uh, uh, made such an investment in it.
Okay, and then uh, to give you an example of the contents of the uh, exercise, the, the schedule, we had to, of course, adjust that uh, due to the COVID-19 crisis uh, many times over, and uh, this is kind of the final format of the, of the schedule. Anyway, the most important uh, notion here is that the, we had a couple of educational modules there that uh, were providing information to the participants and educating them on various topics. And then we uh, topped it up with the, with the intensive phase camp or the game that we were playing this January this year. Uh, and overall, we will have still a follow-up seminar upcoming later this, this autumn to follow up on the subjects that were found during the exercise. And the content <clears throat> that we were educating the participants were about the hybrid influencing uh, and about the crisis communications that is happening during the, uh, the cyber crisis uh, or, or large or simultaneously happening uh, cyber incidents. Uh, and one of the most important topics of the first day was the critical business process prioritization and system level prioritization that was uh, educated to the participants and hopefully they will start doing that in their organizations as well. Uh, the second phase uh, during, uh, during September was about the legislation which is to be considered in these kinds of cyber incidents. Uh, and then the government officials were dealing out their, their expectations towards companies and otherwise um, basically support and, uh, and services that they are providing companies to survive these uh, cyber incidents. For example, the police was dealing out information on how to report cyber crime and uh, so on. And of course, the NCSC was uh, educating companies on, on their services and uh, the support that they are providing for the companies to survive this crisis. Uh, we were sharing information on the uh, ISACs, information sharing and competence centers uh, that are existing currently in Finland. And then, of course, information related to the NIS uh, reporting, which is coming from the EU side. And then the most important topic was the model for major incident management and cooperation for these vast and uh, large scale uh, cyber incidents. We had an additional information uh, sharing session before the game phase of the exercise and the, the educational content there was the pointing out of the roles and responsibilities of the crisis management team uh, in a company. And basically the participants were, were uh, adapting them into those roles. And then of course, we went through the existing reporting methods uh, such as real life forms to, to report crime or GDPR or information security breaches to NCSC and the NIS reporting that is, is happening. And perhaps an interesting topic is the fact that we shared also the uh, imaginary news content all in, in all of these phases through the broadcasts of uh, the Finnish broadcasting company. And that kind of uh, got the players into the mood of the exercise. And that, that takes us into the game and the scenarios that we, we were playing there. Uh, firstly, the game is a non-technical game, uh, which we were playing there, so it's an information sharing exercise of, of, overall. Uh, we were kind of dealing out different kinds of injects that were coming from the scenarios of the background story that was created for the exercise, uh, and uh, it was done to the participants via emails, phones, TV news, social media or internet simulators, and, and uh, software such as those. And that basically means that we can do this exercise uh, remotely nowadays. It was a hybrid this time around and most of the participants were participating remotely into the game phase of the exercise. Um, the communication uh, of the effects uh, in, in this vast network was the most important topic and exercising that, uh, for example, using the uh, Isaac information sharing groups throughout the game was an important point there. And overall, the participants had to rehearse giving interviews or giving press conferences uh, publicly and uh, sharing information through that way as well. 
the scenarios that we were playing there were basically four high level scenarios including uh, many actors such as terrorist actors and uh, even a couple of countries making their uh, own agendas uh, happening in the in the internet realm and uh, affecting that way the participants and the game that was being played real live uh, two sided role playing game that we used so then it was time to play uh, the game in the module three that we were playing this January uh, was, as mentioned, three-day game uh, starting from, from the morning and ending uh, at the evening, uh, a long day for every participant. We have to, had to, of course, start the week by making preparations and making the first injects into the game so that uh, they were healthily ready made, although we then uh, left, left some room from improvisation and, and allowing the game to live its own life uh, throughout the days. Uh, the important topic here was to share the information throughout the days between the different teams in the game, and that was done by doing the uh, summaries of the day. It's an important uh, point to share out, uh, level out the information uh, between the participants all, all of, over in the game. But even more important uh, uh, method to, for doing that was the Isaac group operational meetings that were held uh, regularly within the days. Uh, were, that was the most important and most effective way of sharing information related to cyber crisis and, and uh, dealing out the information which helps the companies in recovering from those incidents. And of course, we, we uh, had a hot workshop in the end of the game and, and discussed the findings that uh, we did with the exercise. And of course, the ULE was also involved throughout the days. So it was uh, keeping their own uh, exercise at the same time with our exercise, and they were also participating in the game. And they even uh, made some, in addition to making the news content, they were making IP-based uh, uh, broadcasting technology for the exercise. And they will be using that uh, in the real life uh, crisis situations after the exercise uh, as well. So it was really an important uh, exercise for them as well. Uh, for over 50 persons were joining from the Finnish broadcasting company. Well, how will we uh, follow up these topics? We, of course, had a hot workshop seminar right after the intensive phase. Uh, basically, the companies were dealing out the information that, uh, or sharing the information that they found uh, in the exercise. And uh, they basically gave promises on the topics that they will be developing in their own organizations. And then we will still be having a follow up seminar later this autumn. Uh, where we can follow up on what what, what, what things they've been able to uh, take further and uh, whether there were any possible impediments uh, in those topics. And of course, we will hear those uh, presentations from the government officials as well and uh, how they will be supporting these, uh, these topics. And then we will have the alumnus activities within the whole network that is unique here in Finland. And we will, of course, take the topics further through those, those uh, networks as well. So uh, how was the NCSC's uh, participation in the Theater 20 exercise, Julia? Right, thanks. So we wanted to take a very comprehensive approach to this exercise and its planning in all phases because it is a very important exercise, not only on a national level, but also for the NCSC to both perform well as an organization as well as help other organizations play and test their processes as best what they can. So we had this kind of plan, do, check, act type of way that I will pre uh, present what we did to you guys. So plan to succeed, first of all. Like I said, we wanted to have a very comprehensive um, approach to this. So we were involved in the entire life cycle of the other 20, so the exercise. We had a member or members in the planning team, coordination team, blue team, red team, white team. So we were all over the uh, exercise uh, scenario um, of writings and, and activities. 
And of course, we had our own post exercise evaluation so we could gather all the good insight that we got and then develop that further. Uh, some of the best practices that we had uh, in terms of this comprehensive approach were that we, by, by doing this, we were able to influence the tools and devices used in the TTX. And that was a very good insight. So even though they weren't the ones that we use in our day to day life, they were um, there were possibilities to make them um, appear closer to those that we do use. Another best practice was that we were able to influence the scenario and injects. Like Anthi said, there were many different scenario, types of scenarios and injects. So by being present and having our say in it, we were able to kind of um, create a more realistic worldview as well as, um, uh, uh, as, well as uh, have our say in, in how we would want to exercise ourselves. And then the third best practice was definitely a two-way communication channel of wants and needs between Digipool and NCSC. So we thought it was very valuable for us to keep direct communications throughout the life cycle. If you could put the next slide, please. Thank you. So on the do face, like Anthe mentioned a few times, there were these ISACs that we um, used and that we currently use in real life as well. So information sharing and analysis centers. So this was an integral part of Theatre 20's goal of enhancing this type of network cooperation and the public private partnerships that we essentially wanted to practice in the exercise. So we had different ISACs for foodstuff, logistics, water, media and so on. And our blue team had very specifically predefined roles for each player. So whether they were so not solely, but mainly responsible for incident response or whether they were mainly responsible for ISAC coordination responsibility. responsibility. So in that sense, it was um, it was um, emulated the reality in a really nice way. And we were able to get some good insight into how those ISACs worked during the exercise and what could be improved. Next slide, please. And then the other part of our play or our, our simulation was the incident handling. So we had ISACs and incident handling for our blue team. And in our blue team, we had five CERT players who received around 200 tickets and emails during the three day TTX. And on the right side, you can see a, a blurry picture of what the incident handling tool looked like. So that picture isn't finished, don't worry about that. Um, and it does not replicate the real um, incident handling procedure that we have, but it was a good, good uh, simulation of that. So what we really needed to do to handle both the ISACs and the incident, uh, the tickets, was that we needed to have a goal oriented mindset. So one was the internal goal setting, what we want to exercise as an NCSC participating. And the other one was external goal setting. So what um, are the go how can we best steer the other players into the right direction? And here, one of the best practices was to have an active, yeah, thank you, have an active uh, white team member to steer the uh, blue team to a right direction. So finding the signal from the noise and how to best serve those players. And next slide, please. And one of the things that we really found interesting was the model for major incident management. So this is something that we've been in the process of developing for quite some time at the NCSC. And now we found a way to practice and exercise that in the other 20. And when we tested that model in a, in a kind of a controlled test laboratory, we found very, very good and valuable insights into what we can do to better enhance it moving forward. And it's a definite tool for public private partnership in going on in the future. And we know we noticed that there's a lot of demand for such similar models for private sector critical infrastructure providers. So this is definitely one of the insights and the act parts of what we could say the lessons learned. So now we have a two minute warning. I think we need to move on, Nanti. And lessons learned. And please, um, could you put the next slide on, please? Thank yeah. you. Well, about the, surely about the organizing such an exercise, uh, it's really an essential to uh, select the target sectors and the sector companies early on in the process and, and start to make the stakeholder communications really required for that. Uh, the most important work uh, was perhaps the background story creation and uh, 
even selecting the everyday tools in the use of the exercise. And as mentioned, uh, we are moving towards that, uh, that we should be using the tools that we are using in the everyday life in these exercises. Uh, and we have to reserve time uh, and time again uh, to induct the participants, even uh, uh, especially within these uh, kind of long exercises that we had uh, due to COVID-19 crisis. And of course, the networking part is something that we will still be having in the future because uh, the COVID prevented that so far. About key findings, you had a couple, Julia. Yes, I think we will need to save most of them for our speakers Q&A later on, but you can read some the summary of our key findings here. Uh, so we had ISAC groups and the model for major incident management from NCSC side, which were terribly useful and we will definitely enhance them in the future. Yeah, and we had we found out many and many topics that we will be improving in the future and and uh, based on the feedback that participants felt that it was really a useful um, exercise. Absolutely. And we will be <laughs> developing that further in the Theater 22 exercise and uh, we will be aiming for international cooperation there as well. Thank you yep. and see you in Q&A. Thank you.